Hello again and welcome to the Brojo Emotionally Shameless series, or whatever it is we're calling it. We've been tackling the big hitters first and we're going to go straight into anxiety today. We're going to have a look at anxiety. And there's two types of anxiety that we'll be talking about. Uh, the first is what I'd call momentary anxiety, so that's an in-the-moment sensation of anxiety. And then chronic, which is long-term anxiety, where anxiety is a baseline feeling that kind of comes to you often um, and stays for a long time. So let's start with momentary anxiety. So what is anxiety? For each of us, that word has different meaning. But mostly what we're talking about is the standard fight or flight or freeze response. So for those of you who haven't heard of this uh, kind of core tenet of psychology, what's often referred to as fight or flight response is when your body and your mind prepares itself to deal with a threatening situation. Um, and what's often not talked about is also the freeze component, which is where you want to fight and flee equally, and so you're frozen in the middle. So fight or flight, you can see this response in all, pretty much all animals. They either panic and run away, or they get very aggressive and attack, or defend themselves aggressively. It's a heightened sensory reactivity, isn't it? Your nervous system um, fires up, you've got your... You feel that queasiness in your stomach, that's actually your digestion shutting down as your body draws resources from the non-essential elements of your body. That's why you feel sick. Um, your heart rate increases, you become hypersensitive with your hearing and your sight. You might start trembling or shaking and that's just the uh, extra adrenaline flowing through to your muscles to give you uh, superhuman strength and power. You're all set up to run away as fast as you can or to battle your way through an obstacle. Anxiety in the moment is often this feeling, this intense um, fear-like sensation running through your body, preparing you to do something intense. Yeah? I've learned to reframe anxiety. I used to have a lot of shame around anxiety, which was uh, causing me a lot of pain. And I learned to make friends with anxiety. It's something I highly recommend to people. And one of the things I, that allowed me to make friends with it was to reframe it. First off, is it's telling me something. Anxiety is my friend in that it's delivering important information to my conscious awareness. The first thing it's telling me is what I consider important. So whenever I get anxious about something, I have found that that is 100% correlated with things I've also decided are important. In fact, that's a key factor in it. For me to be anxious about something, I must be viewing something that's important to me by my belief system. So if I'm anxious about something because it's a threat, it means my safety is important to me. If I'm anxious about rejection, it means that approval is important to me. If I'm anxious about how well something's done, then achievement is important to me. Anxiety tells me what I've classified as important. So anxiety is giving me a heads up. It's saying, you've, you've called something important. You might want to have another look at that. Now, sometimes the answer is yes. I still believe that's a worthwhile, rational thing to put in the important category. And anxiety has just reminded me of that. For example, if I feel anxious before running a workshop, that's fine because workshops are important to me. They're, that's me living my life's work. It's me having a, an impact on the world. Yes, I should feel that that's important. I'd be worried if I didn't get it all anxious. It means maybe I've lost my passion for it. Whereas if I get anxiety about telling someone I'm attracted to them, that means approval's important to me, and that I'm not so cool with. That needs some work. Thank you, anxiety, for telling me that. I've, I've put importance on something that I don't want to rule my life, so you've given me my next piece of self-development to work on. So that's one of the things anxiety does, is it tells you what you've classified as important. It also is the onset of fear, isn't it? Anxiety is kind of like the foreplay of terror, of real fear. Which means it tells us what we worry about, which I guess is a subset of importance. Uh, and so when we're anxious, we're always thinking about the future. Uh, well, you don't get anxious about the current moment. You get anxious about what the current moment implies about the future. You get anxious about what could happen. So anxiety is, is based on an entirely fictional mindset. 
You have to create an imagined predicted future in your mind to get anxious. And this is important information. So the very fact that you're anxious tells you that you're not present, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I don't believe the pseudo-spiritual gurus that say you have to be present all the time. I believe we've got a planning gift, and that requires us to go into the future and the mind. And we've also got a learning ability, which requires us to go into the past. There's times and places for those. And so anxiety will happen when we're looking at the future, and we are predicting an outcome that's out of our control that we don't like. That's what anxiety tells us. And it's okay for it to tell us. It's just providing information. And that's the key uh, the key understanding or reframe that I made around anxiety is understanding it's not telling me what to do. It's asking me a question. It's not giving me a statement, but a question. It's not saying you must fight or you must flee. It's saying you think this is important and you're worried about this. Question why. Why are you considering that important? Why are you worried about it? It's reminding me to double check on the things that I've labeled as important and worrisome to look deeper into those things. It's challenging me to say, hey, is this the trench you, trench you want to die in? Is this the thing you really want to fight for? Is this the thing that's important to you or isn't it? And if it's not, you need to do some shit about that. Now, anxiety is not going to be the one that does that work. It's the one that tells you to do that work. Yeah. Um, so it gives you a question to ask, not an action to take. It also prepares you for thrill. Now, psychopaths cannot experience anxiety. They're incapable of it. Um, and we might think, well, lucky then, those bastards. But they miss out on something. They miss out on thrill. You cannot experience thrill without anxiety. The reason you enjoy bungee jumping so much is because you are shitting yourself walking out onto the platform. When you lose that shitting yourself feeling... It's not quite as good. It can still be pleasurable, but not thrilling. Thrilling. The reason we watch horror movies is because of the anxiety, the anticipated build-up we get with the big shock. And then we get through it, and there's a thrill in there. You know, there's a rewarding sensation of being thrilled. So, anxiety is your precursor ingredient to thrill. And that's why you need to be making friends with it. Without anxiety, you cannot be thrilled. Now let's switch to talking about chronic anxiety briefly. Chronic anxiety is when you kind of feel it all the time. It is a determining factor in your life. You may even be diagnosed with general anxiety disorder or social anxiety or something like that. And a lot of people really hate themselves around anxiety because it's chronic. They feel like they're victims to it, that there's something wrong with them. I have a theory about anxiety and my theory is that chronic anxiety is caused by shame about anxiety itself. So there's nothing wrong with, with anxiety. Anxiety is a helpful emotion. It tells you what's important. It prepares you to be thrilled. And it guides you and, and helps you figure out your priorities. But when you tell yourself, I shouldn't feel anxious because it's unpleasant or people told me not to be or society shames nervousness, whatever reason you come up with to say, I shouldn't be anxious, that doesn't get rid of anxiety, does it? It multiplies it. That's what I call anxiety squared. When you get anxious about being anxious. You know, there's a, I think this is number one cause of erectile dysfunction and other performance issues, is you're worried that you're going to be worried. You're anxious that you're going to be anxious. You're nervous that you'll get nervous. And now you don't even know what you're anxious about. You've lost track of all reality here because you're, you're in a loop where you're feeling the emotion about the emotion. And I would suggest that this comes from shame. For some reason, you think it's wrong to have anxiety. And this is the point where you need to start. Your chronic anxiety is telling you that you have not yet made peace with your anxiety. And I, I don't guarantee many things, but I almost can guarantee that if you make your peace with anxiety, if you come to see it as your friend, as you let it come to the table of your emotional committee meetings and have a say, and let it participate in your life, the chronic nature of it will go away. At least that's what happened for me. Anxiety used to be my baseline. I felt always just a little bit nervous, especially in social situations. I'd be at least a little bit nervous unless I was drinking or taking drugs. Nowadays, I only feel anxiety when I need to be feeling anxiety, when I need to be looking at what's important to me, when I'm in a new situation that I need to be intense and prepared for. And the key to creating the shamelessness is in your expression. 
the key to healing your relationship with anxiety is to let yourself and other people know that it's happening, to step into it rather than away from it. A great example is like public speaking. If you're nervous at the start of a public speaking event, then make the beginning of your speech talking about how nervous you are. Let it out like it's the most normal thing in the world, which it is. Other than psychopaths, everyone gets anxiety. And many people in today's modern world have chronic anxiety. So it's not like you're this weird freak that's all alone. In fact, you're rather common and normal in your anxiety issues. And then when you speak about it, as you express yourself, you'll notice, am I worried about something real or something imagined? Am I genuinely being threatened? Or am I simply being told that I find this important? It's through the expression that you discover this. So hopefully that helps you. That's my take on anxiety, my very brief take. I've got a podcast where I go deeply into anxiety. I'll try and include that in the comments there below. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel as we dig more into these emotions. I'll be dealing with the tough and ugly ones first. And uh, I'll see you guys all for the next one. Cheers.